Home Sweet Home. I guess that'll be the title of this one. While studying spirituality and studying culture, we can't forget to study the type of dwellings and the meanings or the reasons why they had these specific dwellings. So in these ones I'll go through and we'll start to discuss the different types of dwellings that indigenous Indian people had lived in. There was the Navajo Sod or Adobe Hogan. There was the Prairie Earth Lodge, the Arctic Dome Snow House, the Northwest Coast Multifamily Plank House, the Southwest Stone or Adobe Pueblo, the Plains Buffalo High TP, which everyone is normally familiar with and kind of the stereotypical housing. We can't forget about the Great Basin Statch Wickup, the Southeastern Waddle or the Dobe House, the Yukon Double Lean Two, the Seminole Stilt Chicky, the Plateau Mud Pit House, the Algonquin Mat or Bark Wigwam, and the Northeastern Family Longhouse. In this section, we'll kind of go through each of them and get a breakdown what they meant, why they were there, and more or less if there was any spiritual meaning. So in this video, we're probably going to go to the one everybody knows that's kind of stereotypical, but we'll go to the Plains Buffalo Teepee. Let's dig into the culture and maybe find out something new. The word teepee originates from the Lakota language and the word thepee, which often translates to they dwell. It's said there is some evidence suggesting that the teepee dwellings may have been used as far back as 10,000 BCE. Archaeologists have found indication that dwellings made from a series of wooden poles existed a long time ago by carbon dating soil samples taken from what appears to be the remains of ancient campsites and villages. Also, it was very interestingly stated that archaeologists discovered stone rings that date back to 7500 BCE. Now, the stone rings are definitely linked to teepee construction because the stones were used to hold down the outer edge of the hide covered dwelling. The teepee is the main living structure of all the migratory tribes in what's considered the Great Plains area. They followed the buffalo, but to name a few, the Blackfoot, the Lakota, the Kiowa, the Apache, the Gross Venture, Crow, Oglala, Cheyenne, and Oropaho. It's much more than a shelter, but it reflects and beautifies and reiterates the mythology of these tribes in the sense of the mythology of the Indian creates architecture. And architecture, in turn, echoes and reinforces the sacred realm in the mythology. As both home and sacred place, the TP serves an imaginistic lens to the view of interaction in the mundane and timeless in the culture. Now, for most Indians, the circle is a sanctified pattern of movement. It has no beginning or no end. It's a form that always comes back around to its beginning, integrating the past, constantly enlarging its circumference, and depending on the dimensions through its connection with the unconscious and the sacred. The circle is anti-linear. Linearity is a process which always pushes forward, deserting its history and thus deserting its destiny. The circle, however, embraces the wholeness central to the Indian culture. It depicts the unity of the universe and the unity between history and destiny, the unity between present and memory, the unity between above and below, between the conscious and unconscious, and the mundane and the sacred. Unraveling the secret of the circle, or the sacred hoop, gives us entrance into the Indian way being presented into the mundane world and at the same time present in the sacred, timeless feminine dimension. The sacred or medicine hoop can be pictured as a series of coincentric circles and mandalic forms in the spiral down from the largest which encompasses the whole universe of the circle to the earth. To the circle of the teepees, to the individual teepee, and finally to the smallest circle which is that encompasses the individual Indian. The process in the wider hoop affects the process in the individual Indian, and the circular and internal process of the individual is expressed through dreams and visions. In turn, it actually affects the largest hoops. Set in the wider context of hoops, the individual Indian encourages to seek within, through visions and dreams, ways to integrate and reiterate the culture and the relationship of change. The uppermost circle encompasses the lives of the Indians, extends far beyond the limits of human vision into the mysterious world of the Wakan. This hoop divides cosmic space into distant, spartial zones associated with different zones of power. The sky, Earth's surface, and the realms beneath the Earth and the water 
These zones of power are connected through vertical access, termed the access mundi, or the cosmic access, or what some would see as the world tree. Uh, the American Indian sees the access as an intimate part of his structure and a path ultimately available to them to connect with cosmic energy. Human prayer, the smoke of the sacred pipe, the smoke emanating from the hearth locked within the heart of the teepee along with this, it's believed these things travel out the top of the TP and make it to the Creator on a regular basis and encourages you to connect with them while you're in your dwelling, your place of peace. Now, that was just talking about the circle, but let's get into the construction. Generally, the TP began with three poles. Uh, they were used to anchor the structure and they represent present, future, and past. Uh, these are the three essence of life. Then another seven poles are placed around there with these three anchors in a clockwise position. Each of the poles have very specific meanings such as the seven brothers or the seven stars of the Big Dipper constellation, um, seven individual sacred sites. It could be many different things. Now once all ten poles are erected and cover a place for the hole in the structure and they place an additional two poles outside that will hold the flaps open at the top of the teepee. This allows and helps to regulate the flow of energy and circulates air throughout the inner circle of the lodge. Now symbolically, they use 12 poles for the 12 months of the year, the formation of time and seasons. Once the lodge is completed, which is another word for a teepee, the inner part would be seen not only as the physical protection from the weather, but the connection to the spiritual world. It was believed that inside the teepee was a vortex and the point in which the poles are tied, they connected to the spiritual world. The ancestors live in the spirit world of the upper reaches of the TP. Therefore, the ancestors were always looking down on us and they were with us. But this TP shape actually represented the circle of life or a never ending cycle of life. There's a very deep meaning in the TP and the designs on the outside were also just as significant as the shape and the things that went on the exterior of the TP. But even though not all interpretation of TP designs are known, but they do embody the understanding of a connection between the physical and the metaphysical realm. And to live inside a TP, that was a meaning of balance and harmony. Well, you may be wondering why TPs were important to the Indians of the Plains. Well, it's because they traveled often to hunt, join social gatherings such as sun dances, and even to find winter shelter. So they needed homes that could be taken down easily and just as easily put back up. They had to develop a unique form of portable house, which is the teepee. Since they were a mobile grouping of people and individuals who went around, the weight was easier to carry also as were the hides and the different things. According to the Canadian Encyclopedia, on important occasions, encampments were organized in a circular form, usually with the opening to the east. Teepees were arranged in a precise order with the circle, band by band, family by family. Occasionally, these subdivisions formed subsidiary circles. Often, painting teepees composed a smaller circle within the core of the overall circle, particularly during major gatherings such as the Sundance ceremonies. Did you know, in the Plains culture, Tribal women made, owned, and put the teepees up. Since the teepees belonged to the women, men had to ask their wife's permission before decorating the exterior of their teepee. It normally took two Indian women to put up a teepee, and the men, they never really helped. They were normally hunters or warriors. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about the teepee, and be sure to remember, the rolling winds in the plains you had to have something that was more aerodynamic, so therefore the TP would have been the perfect shape, and being a cone, the wind cut right around it. And next time, we'll discuss the wigwam, and talk about that style of housing, who used it, and where it was located. Thanks again for stopping in and listening, and I truly hope you all have a wonderful day.